Hello, my name is Elijah Owens, and today I'm going to be going over how to get into the bow staff and how to properly strike with the bow staff. Let's get this started. So, first thing I'm going to go over is the bow staff in general. So, there's two types of bow staffs. One of them is a mid-range bow staff, and the other is a long-range bow staff. And a long-range bow staff is not proportional to your size, but the mid-range should be, okay? This bow staff in particular is an XMA, ATA XMA approved bow staff. What XMA means is that it's extreme martial arts. Uh, the founder of extreme martial arts is the blue Power Ranger from Lightspeed Rescue, Mike Chet. He is a master in the ATA, and uh, he was one of my teachers that I had the privilege to meet. And uh, he's a great guy. So, to properly know if this is a good bow staff for you is you check your height. This is generally my height, so this is a good bow staff. You don't want it to be below the. You don't want it to be below your shoulder. And you don't want it to be too high above your head. Okay, so this is almost a little, almost too big for me, but it's good enough. And if you have kids or if you're planning on buying a bow staff and you know that you're going to be growing, you might want to order a little bit of a little bit larger bow staff. Uh, there's two types of bow staff. You have the extreme bow staff, which is this one. And then you have the traditional bow staff, which is uh, the bow staff that like you screw in that is metal and it weighs a lot more. Those, I believe, are generally cheaper than the lightweight ones. But um, for extreme competition, you're going to want the lightweight ones in order to spin fast and uh, do tricks easier. Do easier tricks. Make the tricks easier. Yeah. Because generally there'll be times where you toss it up or you're spinning and, you know, you don't want to hurt yourself. You can still hurt yourself, but I don't believe this badly. So, yeah, that is the bow staff. Now let's talk about how to hold the bow staff. So, in um, ATA, there is two ways of holding the bow staff. There is both overhand, so right hand's on top, left hand's on top, and you're here, just like so. You don't want to hold the bow staff too close together where you're like a T-Rex, and you don't want to hold the bow staff too far apart where you can't properly strike, finish the strikes that you're doing. Okay, um, this bow staff obviously has a grip tape, and that helps me guide my uh, hands to where I know I need to hold my bow staff, okay? Depending on um, how big or small of a person you are, you may hold it a little bit closer together or a little bit farther apart. That's okay. You just want to generally stay in the middle of the section. So now, uh, now that I went over how to hold the bow staff this way, there is the secondary position. So this was ready position. This is a traditional way of holding the bow staff. Now the secondary position is a traditional and an extreme way of holding this bow staff. Um, you will use this position in your traditional form, mid-range shambong form, and then you will use this for your extreme parts where you are making your own form. Okay. Cool thing about XMA is that you can't do anything wrong. And anything that you put into it is your style, and you incorporate the martial arts with the acrobatics, with the tricking, and like the tossing of the weapons, all the fun stuff that you would see in like movie trailers, like Spider Man and all that cool stuff. Personally, uh, my favorite type of martial arts, I think, is the extreme because it's what every kid essentially wants to be. I mean, that's what makes, I think, ninjas ninjas, like the backflips 
the the B twists, the corkscrews, all that cool stuff, and then the weapons on top of that. Just it's a great way of like of doing something that is cool and makes people go wow like that was you know so crazy like how did you do that i just enjoy doing xma traditional is cool too it's just there's only one way to do traditional and there's no other way to do it and that's fine some of you there are different types of people that like uh traditional and extreme and I'm the one that I think prefers extreme because I personally am not that flexible. And uh, that also has to do because, well, I don't stretch enough. But in extreme, you don't have to do whatever the other person does. You can make it your own. <sighs> okay. So now that we went over the first way of holding it, and the second way of holding it. Now we're gonna go over the basic six strike combination from the first way of holding it, the ready position. So I'm here, you have your ready position. Your ready position is shoulder width, feet shoulder width apart, chest up, chin up, both hands on the jongbong, and you're here. It's out and ready, okay? Now, when we do this uh, six strike combination, you wanna make sure that you have your front stance already learned and you already know what a front stance is. So I will go over it with you right now. Front knee is bent, back leg is straight, all 10 toes are facing forward. I do not wanna bend my back leg like a lunge in a uh, gym class, you don't wanna do that. Back leg is straight. Back leg is straight. All ten toes are forward. Okay. You're not supposed to be able to see your front knee or your front uh, toes. Your front knee should be blocking that. And then your back leg should be straight. All ten toes forward. Just like this. Here's the side angle. Okay. So now that you've got your front stance, you're in your ready position, and we're going to go over these six strike combinations. Watch me first, and then I'll let you do it. So it looks like this. Set. Again, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Set. Okay, and that's the first basic <coughs> strike combination that you would learn in order to get acquainted with the Bosa. That was the first one I learned, and I learned from there. Okay? So I'm here, ready position. You're gonna go to your front stance, strike one. Boom! From here, make sure that you're in your front stance, and then you let your hand, when you do that first strike, you simultaneously move your feet into that front stance, and you let this hand slide all the way to your hip, just like that. From here, strike one, and then two. Again, ready position, strike one, boom. Go back. Practice that over and over again, pause the video, and then um, when you're ready, unpause it, and we'll get started again. Okay, so now that, um, you have obviously practiced that. You're here. Once you have that first strike in, I'm gonna continue. Three, four, five, six, break this. Now, one fundamental skill that you will need to have while striking with the bow staff is, say, rotation creates power. Rotation, when you rotate your body, your back, your hips, it creates that power in order to uh, 
successfully strike your target position. Strike one. Boom! Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ready position. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ready position. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ready position. As you gradually get better at striking like that, you'll gain the speed that you need. Those are the two basic principles that you need for getting acquainted with the bow set. It is speed and it is power. Speed comes with repetition and power comes with rotation of your body and your hips. Now I don't want to over accentuate my rotation. I want to make sure that I'm striking along the center line. The center line is from my forehead all the way down where it splits my legs and my face. <laughs> okay, that's my center line. So I'm here, right position. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right position. Okay. Now I don't want to just be placing the bow staff. Okay, this does not look very powerful at the moment because I'm just letting the bow staff do whatever it wants. Okay, I'm not in control of the bow staff. You want to have that power, that speed, that aggression almost. Here, strike one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? Practice that on your own and pause the video. When you feel like you're ready, unpause the video and we'll continue. Okay, so now, once you have gone over that, we're going to go over the secondary position that I talked about, which was left hand on top, right hand on bottom. This is both the traditional and extreme way of holding the bow staff. Okay, you'll generally use this position the most out of this uh, over this position. This is a more traditional way of holding the bow staff, and then you have your extreme and traditional. So I'm here going over the second uh, combination. I call this my 5-4 combination. It's uh, It starts out with a move, and then you go into the combination. So it's five moves, but it is really just four. So I'm here, show you, just like this. Strike one, boom! Just like that. Go back. When you do that, just like the first combination where we hold it both overhand, you're going into that front stance, okay? So again, strike one, ready position, strike one, boom! Up, down, side, side, ready position. Now this time the right position is underhand and it's overhand, okay? Again, ready, strike one, up, down, side, side, ready position. Now when I strike, the first one that goes up, this part of the bow staff is on top of my shoulder, and then I strike down. This part of the bow staff is underneath my arm, side. This part of the bow staff is on my bicep, side again. Now we're back to the second move, where it is underneath my arm. Right position, and go. Boom, up, down, side, side. Now when I do this, see how I'm still in my mid-range section? I don't, except for that first move, I don't want to be staying in that position. Okay, you want to let this part of the bow staff slide in between your left hand. Make that fluid motion. So I'm here, ready position, strike one, boom, up, down, side, side. Ready position. Now, to add that extreme flair that I like personally, I'm going to show you um, a way that you can do that. So, 
instead of the traditional ready position, what you're going to do is you're going to let your left hand slide up and leave your right hand on the bottom and you're going to bring your left foot up and leave your right foot down. So you almost look like a Power Ranger. It's kind of hard to see in my pants, but yeah. So here, okay, and this is an extreme ready position. See how I'm over-exaggerating my body? That is what XMA makes XMA, the over-exaggeration. Instead of like the traditional punch like this, you have your tradition, your extreme, which is your body being more exaggerated instead of just square like this. So I'm here, ready position, right hand on bottom, left hand on top. Ready, strike one, boom, up, down, side, side. Ready position again, prepare, strike one, boom, up, down, side, side. And again, when you practice this with repetition, you'll gain that speed. And then with your rotation of your body, you'll gain that power. Remember to always finish the strike by letting the jaw bong hit your side. Okay, you don't want to be like this. It's not a lightsaber. Okay. It's a bow staff. Alright. So, practice that. Um, now I'm going to be going over a trick, a simple trick, so that way you can add a little bit more flair into what your XMA form could look like. So go to your right position. So now, instead of just doing the plain old strike, what you're going to do is you're going to let the jawing bong spin. So almost like you're gonna, almost like you're gonna strike up top. You're gonna let the John Bong roll into a figure eight. So watch the tip of the John Bong. You're making a figure eight. Okay, back to ready position. Make one figure eight and then strike. So I'm here. And that fast motion in adds a little bit of flair into your combination up, down, side, side. So it looks like this. Okay. Remember to add that front stance. You don't have to do the front stance with the left side. You can do the front stance with the right side if you wish. But for the traditional, um, yeah, you stick to what the tradition, the traditional uh, way of doing it is. But for extreme, it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want and add your own style, incorporating the martial arts. Okay, so here, up, down, side, side. And I let the bow staff hit my side because I know that that sound is what makes the bow staff seem powerful. It also finishes the strike. Uh, hopefully this video was informative. Thank you all for watching if you made it this far. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and, um, I'll see you around. Alright. Set. Bow.